For continuous air and water barriers on your next build, choose Zip System Sealing Solutions. Seal tough jobs in a flash. Pete Yost here for the Unbuild It YouTube channel, broadcasting live from my wingnut test facility, hence the hat, here in my basement in Brattleboro, Vermont. And remember, we're taking a look at water held in tension when the cladding is right up against the weather resistant barrier. And the way we are assessing how much water gets through the weather resistant barrier is to initially go to our lab and take a moisture content by weight reading um, and also by weighing the sample prior to any testing. And then after submitting to, uh, the samples of the sheathing with the weather resistant barrier to the test for water held in surface tension, we simply reassess the moisture content by weight with the pin type moisture meter and reweigh it on this accurate laboratory scale. So today, uh, I think this is the third in the series, we're taking a look at um, integrated weather resistant barrier and structural sheeting products. So this is the uh, Huber zip system, zip sheathing, and there is a polymeric uh, coating laminated right to the surface of the OSB. And the same is true for the Georgia Pacific force field system. And the idea is that we have to submit these to the same test where we're going to take and with the sample pin it against metal roofing simulated by the, uh, by the flashing. And then we're going to place water with an eyedropper along this edge and allow it to drip between the weather resistant barrier laminate to the OSB and the metal cladding. But a little uh, wrinkle to the system here is that the bottom edge of the sample is exposed, right? So we have to protect that. We don't want water running between the weather resistant barrier and the metal uh, flashing and then getting soaked up by this edge. So what I did is for each system I took their tape. So for the zip sheathing I took their zip tape and sealed off the bottom of the sample so that water running down between the cladding as simulated by the metal flashing and the surface of the uh, polymeric coating doesn't get in and then I did the same thing with force field. I took their material which is the um, sorry which is the polymeric coating and I used their force field tape to seal off the bottom and of course I did that front and back to each of these samples. Of course, I then had to re-weigh them because I've added quite a bit of weight by adding the tape. But again, I'm going to take the metal cladding. I'm going to pin it between the metal flashing with a clamp like this. And then I'm going to take my eyedropper full of water and drip it down and allow it to go between the uh, weather resistant barrier laminated to the sheathing and the cladding. And we're going to see how the, each of these uh, laminated weather resistant barriers to uh, structural sheathing, how it performs over time. So stay tuned. We'll come back with testing results in the next segment. Welcome back, everyone. We're here at the Wingnut Test Facility in Brattleboro, Vermont. And just a quick reminder, we are testing two types of integrated weather resistant barrier and structural sheathing the Huber zip system and the Georgia Pacific force field for how they manage water held in tension between the weather resistant barrier and a cladding when there's direct contact between the two. I've done two rounds of testing. Each time I've taken a millimeter, uh, excuse me, a milliliter of water and placed it along that edge between the flashing and the uh, weather resistant barrier using an eyedropper and allow that water to get between the metal and the weathers the barrier to see how when that water is held in tension whether it gets to the weathers the barrier. So I did over a day and a half period I did five one milliliter uh, tests then I waited, weighed each of the samples, did another round of 
five one milliliter tests in another day and a half period. So what are the results? So the first thing to remember is that when we talk about these samples, they only weigh about a fifth of a pound. And so um, when we get a difference, it could be a difference, and in fact it was a difference for both the Georgia Pacific and the uh, uh, Huber Zip system, a gain of like a thousandth of a pound um, or 0.1 or 0.2% difference in moisture content. Very, very small changes. However, using both the laboratory scale to measure the gain of water, as well as using the Delmhorse moisture meter, the differences in the measurements were very, very small, but they were consistent. In each case, for each of the two rounds of a day and a half with five milliliters total water being added into that space between the cladding and the weathers of the barrier, we got consistently positive increases or gains in weight. So what does that mean? It means that, yes, a very small amount of water held in tension is making its way through these two samples. But if we're talking about uh, only a fifth of a pound for the total sample weight and a gain of only uh, a, a thousandth of a pound, or um, using the moisture meter uh, pin type with uh, weight gain, a change in 0.1 or maybe 0.2 percent, very, very small increases in mass that we attribute to water gain, um, and certainly ones that can easily be managed by the materials. So there you have it. This is our latest round of uh, wing nut testing of water held in surface tension between claddings and weather resistant barriers. And we have good news for both the Huber system and the Georgia Pacific in that they handled the water held in tension quite well with only very tiny amounts making its way through the weather resistant barrier um, with almost all the water managed um, when held in tension that way. So stay tuned for more results coming from the wing nut test facility. And that's bye for now from Peter Yost for the Unbuild It YouTube channel.